Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video. Now today, we have a video that you guys love to watch. We got some competitive Brawl Stars and we got ourselves versus none other than Tribe Gaming. So as you guys know, there's Queso Cup, which is a league that happens usually all throughout the year. It just started up again. The first week was this week. We had, we had our second match and it was against Tribe because, you know, who else would they give us other than Tribe to start off the season? Um, it's been a pretty long while since we went against Tribe, really in anything competitively. Um, additionally, we don't really practice against one another because monthly finals are coming up in, what day is it today? In three days. And we have a very big possibility of facing Tribe in the semifinals of the monthly finals. So we haven't really been facing each other. We've both been training really hard. So this match was kind of, you know, I wouldn't say it's the end all and this is, you know, how it everything is, but... It's kind of like you see how you stack up against the other really good team in the region. So I was really looking forward to this game. It was very intense. So that being said, let's hop into the games and let's show you guys what happened. So going into the gem set, I just want to say I lost the knockout set. And the knockout set, we lost 2-1 on Flaring Phoenix. Tribe had a really good draft and they played it really well. Uh, knockout's definitely one of our weaker modes and something we've got to work on, but, uh, so it's one nothing right now for Tribe. It's a best of five mode, so the first team to win three modes wins, and you have to win two games in the mode to win. So it's a best of three per mode and then a best of five total. So each, you know, competition has a draft now, and the draft is really important. You can throw drafts, so if you are lacking in the draft and your IQ, you know, if you're not as smart as the other team, you're going to lose before even getting in it. So the draft is really important. How this one went was, I believe they first picked Tara. So then we took Amber. Or sorry, we didn't take Amber. We took Sandy and Spike. They took Amber and Max. And then we took Fang. So I like their comp a lot. I think they definitely out comp us uh, here. Sandy's a pretty good brawler on this map, especially when there's no Jean. But I... I, at first, I thought maybe we had comp, but now looking back, they definitely did uh, out comp us quite a bit here. Um, so yeah, we have OG versus an Amber, which I think is kind of an even matchup. Uh, apparently, Amber wins that matchup, says my teammates, um, and I believe them. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's that. We have Toonie landing a Tara, which is really hard for Toonie. Uh, he dives in there. He gets the kill, but he doesn't hit his super, so that kind of is unfortunate. Me and Zulon are kind of just doing our things in the mid. On double swoosh mid, you're really close to the other lane, so it's pretty scary. You can't really overcommit too much or else you're kind of screwed. Um, and with my fire, or with my grass being burnt by Amber's fire, I'm kind of just trapped, you know, in my own spawn doing my thing. Now that Tyrant's out of pets, it's a little bit easier for Toonie uh, to try and make some plays. He's going to go up here. He misses his stun. If he was like half a tile closer, I think he might have gotten both of them. Um, and we might have been able to win the game right there. Uh, but no, he doesn't get it. Tyrant ends up getting super, so I got to go into a super safe position. Tyrant ends up missing his super, so now it's kind of even 9-9 right now. I'm trying to go aggro because I know they're about to get the countdown. And obviously, you know, I'm not trying to lose this game. Um, they get the next spawn. Toonie's going to go in and get it, which is a good play by Toonie. I stun Cory, so Cory can't spam us. And then I just go ahead and pick up the gem that Toonie dropped. 11-10 here now. I think everyone's doing a really good job. Um, on both teams right now. Tyrant tries to sneak on OG. OG gets the kill, but Zulan has the presence to pick up a gem in the mid. Now, a gem spawns. Cory hits me with a really good super. I get forced to one shot, and because I have no grass, I have to go so far back. They easily pick up that gem. I think maybe OG could be a little bit more aggressive there because Toonie's going to end up getting pinched out. I can get the gem to tie it up, but obviously I'm going to end up dying. And, uh, and yeah, we go down. So, I mean, kind of close i think any team could have won here it was a difference of like w literally one gem uh but they're gonna end up taking the w here really well played by them they executed really well so let's hop on over into game number two let's keep this going all right so here we go into game number two and again it's the same thing um i don't know if you guys saw at the start of last game but zulan was kind of letting me go aggressive and steal his gems as one spawns on my side then his then mine then his etc um, so I got to a pretty early gem lead just off Zulan being a little bit passive last game. So again, we pick up one of his gems. So now it's three to one. Um, this game, you know, we thought about switching lanes, uh, but OG wanted to keep his lane. I know it's a really hard lane for Toonie. Um, and he's actually playing pretty out of his mind for getting as much value as he's been getting against the Tara lane. Uh, but he's been doing really good. So 
I tried Finch's lane a little bit. I didn't really do much. I maybe hit like a Tara pet or something, but Toonie Hard wins his lane. Meanwhile, we have Amber versus Spike on the other side, and I don't know. I feel like Spike, like it's kind of easy for Spike. I don't know. I can see how it's easy for Amber as well, but I feel like Spike can definitely win that. OG's been winning that. Um, Tyrant's going to miss a pull. I'm not trying to like talk down or like be mean or like anything like that. But a really big difference in this set was the amount of Tara supers that were whiffed. Uh, and I mean, Tyrant's like one of the best players in NA, maybe like the best player in NA. But we got pretty bailed out by a lot of missed Tara supers. There was a couple last game, which was a one gem game where if you hit one of those, you know, it's not really like that. And then again, Tyrant's kind of whiffing a little bit here. OG also dominating his lane against Cory. Cory hasn't been able to burn anything. And as a Sandy, you know, I just walk into the mid, pick up gems, and that's about it. So at this point, Toonie's like, all right, I'm bored. I'm going to team wipe. Uh, so he does one of those fang things where you super onto a thing, and then you bounce onto another thing, and that kill gets you a kill on another thing. So Toonie did one of those. Um, Tara got super, so he's looking kind of dangerous here. Uh, it does not connect. Toonie supers up, grabs a kill. We win this game fairly easily, um, and we feel like we kind of figured out what to do on this map, so let's go into game three, show you guys what happened there. So, going into game number three here, again, same strategy, we're gonna have Toonie on the right side. I'm gonna, I think this game I decide to pinch a little bit harder, because if we can get Toonie, you know, up and going, it's good. Again, I'm allowed to just walk up into their side and grab that gem, so that's really good. I take out the pets, so Toonie doesn't really have to chip them. Zulan here goes aggro, and he grabs my gem now, so... He's kind of playing the aggressor here. Again, I do the same thing. I take his gems. We're kind of doing it back and forth to each other now. Uh, Toonie gets pets spammed at him again. Um, and as you know, pets are being used and all that. Uh, Tyrant with the hit pull over there. After pets are used and all that, it's a lot easier for us. And considering we have the lead, it's looking really good. So Toonie's going to do a thing over there. Um, he's going to get a kill. Now it's 4-3. We have Zulan kind of trapped. Toonie almost gets the kill, then he decides to full send, ends up getting the kill, and then also leaves Tyrant at one shot. So this allows OG to get kind of aggressive on that lane and get bush position, which is really good when you're in the bush versus being out of the bush. Um, I remember in the VC, Toonie said he was going to target the max to try and get the gems, but I was like, oh, yo, Amber's got the gems, and he's, he's like, oh, okay, that's pretty simple. So then he goes up and he kills the Amber. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't survive, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, OG grabs a kill over there. I go aggro, pick up a gem. And again, the stuns, I don't really, like, need stuns. In, as opposed to, like, Brawl Ball, where you use stuns to score, and they're worth a lot. In gem, it's kind of like an escape scenario. Um, this Sandy Super was really bad. Um, I actually, never mind. That was a different Sandy Super I was talking about. I end up getting the kill on Cory over there because of the Sandy Super. And now, Toonie has somehow become our mid. Um, I pick up a gem over there. I'm kind of trapped. Toonie goes aggro, gets a kill over there. OG starts poking Cory. They somehow let me go alive. Uh, probably because OG helped me out over there. He tanks a Zulan clip to the face. And they only need to reset one time. And they're looking pretty scary. So it's quite possible that they do reset. Especially considering that our gems are split. But Toonie's going to go in, get a kill. We're going to grab another kill. And that is going to be it for double swoosh. So we are going to say, take the set 2-1. And tie it up 1-1 one, one in sets. All right, so going on to Super Stadium. This is a pretty interesting draft. I think what happened was they first picked Byron. Then we proceeded to take B and Spike. Then they took the Dog and Gale. And then I thought we won because I was like, all right, we're just going to go Barley and win. Which we definitely do have comp here by a good amount. Uh, having a thrower into Ruffs and... Gale on this map is like an automatic win. Um, looking back at it, we probably should have went Dyna because Barley's a little bit more just like slowly push, slowly do your thing, um, and just whatever, you know, slowly push them back. But they can't really hit me, so I definitely should have went Dyna so I can just punish them more and try and make plays. Uh, OG's doing a pretty good job on the dog lane. Toonie's doing a good job as well. The, these guys played it really well, though. Something about Tribe is that even when they don't have comp, they are really good at making up for it and playing correctly. So they played this really, really well. I definitely do think with for like a 100,000% certainty that we had comp. Uh, but they're playing it pretty smart here. 
and they're doing a pretty good job. So my goal is kind of just to get a super, and then once I get a super, um, I'm just going to win my lane and push them into a corner. That's kind of the impression that everyone was under this game. Let's just wait for me to get a super, and then we'll do our thing. Toonie literally one-shots Cory over there, uh, which kind of allows us to walk into the mid a lot easier. Then we have Zulan kind of trapped, so I think we get Zulan. We do, and then now I have my super. So when you throw a Barley super and you're trapped in Super Stadium, look at Cory. He's got nowhere to go, so he's going to be in that corner. Uh, we decide not to rush the goal because there's no way we're scoring on a Gale there. We have no HP. And now I have this super aggressive position where they're just coming out of, out of their spawn and they have no HP and I just have position and all that. I almost die there, but I managed to stay alive. Uh, kind of lucky, probably bailed out by Toonie. Um, I think we kill Tyrant here. We do. The Barley super, again, very lethal. Going to get them kind of pinched. And then I'm just going to sauce the ball over to Toonie going to put that one in the net and that's going to be a one to nothing lead so after this game we're like all right you know what we have this thing won like we have the outcome this is pretty simple like let's just let me win lane slowly push them back not the case let's hop into game two and let's show you guys what happened in the next game again we do the same thing i'm going to go on zulan's lane now zulan tries a different strategy he's going to run right up and put a tornado down now i don't necessarily think that was the greatest idea uh, because I'm kind of just close to super now and I'm a barley so I can just shoot over the wall not really the biggest deal in the world um, But I mean, I guess it worked out kind of OG not having the easiest time against tyrants lane right now I mean dog versus spike is pretty hard because spike doesn't have that much ammo and The dog has bags, so it's pretty rough Zulan gets the one shot but Cory heals him up I'm gonna super don't really hit a shot. So it's was kind of a waste of the super and again Zulan's gonna do the same thing and rush up and block me off um OG goes down over there and I mean they kind of want to push up but we have a B that has some pretty good control right now and then Barley versus Gale so Gale can't really push up so we're kind of doing a good job here unfortunately though Toonie does end up going down and that kind of allows them to get a little bit of a position here additionally my wall was broken and now they're powered up so it's going to be pretty rough for us here. Get it? Rough? Because they have roughs. Haha, <laughs> so funny. Uh, but anyways, we decide to switch lane here. Because this side has walls and the other side doesn't have walls. Um, but their plan is kind of just to stall and wait until overtime. So that's kind of what's going to end up happening here. So there's kind of no point of watching this. Uh, it's them. We'll skip just like 10 seconds at a time. It's kind of them just like holding us in spawn. Playing patient. Playing the game properly, like they did a really good job here because we definitely do have comp here. And they're just holding us in spawn. They're playing the game really patient, forcing us to use gadgets. Because they know once the game gets into overtime, unless Toonie does absolutely like insane, unless he like five taps, unless he like three taps Zoo, then two taps Cory, all that, we're not winning. And that's pretty hard to do against Tribe. So they're just going to slowly push us back over like a minute and a half. And uh, they're going to end up getting the win. So they tie it up at 1-1. Again, we definitely have comp here. So it's really impressive that they're able to do that. Uh, so we're going to make some adjustments. So let's hop on over to game number three and show you guys what we changed up. So going to this game, we decided to put me on roughs because when I was on the roughs game one, it went pretty well. And then OG, um, like Spike v roughs is pretty difficult. Like, I don't know. It's kind of hard to win. So... I'm in my lane, and they have this strategy where Corey's going to stand, if you guys look at, like, the top right of the map, and then Tyrant is going to position himself over, like, basically in his net. So I'm going so aggro, and I still can't kill him. Meanwhile, Toonie isn't in Corey's range, because Tyrant's hiding behind a wall. He can't really hit Tyrant. And then Corey's just healing Zulan, and Zulan's just running in a straight line, trying his best. Um, so they had some really good strategy here looking back I probably should have went more aggressive because I'm a barley But every time I went aggro I got pinched and then I was scared that I didn't want to feed the roughs because they were gonna break uh, My wall and you know when I don't have a wall barley's obviously not that good But I definitely should have been more aggressive because I was the carry I also threw this game I'll show you guys where I threw the game not very cool. Um, I had a very big throw play uh, but so far, you know, kind of good. We're doing our thing. OG's shooting the Gale. Toonie's shooting the Byron. The Byron shooting Toonie. The Gale shooting OG. I'm shooting over a wall. Tyrant's shooting grass. I think he's like one shot to super here. 
Um, so I'm just trying to get my super and also not trying to feed. But at the same time, they're just waiting till overtime. So this is a pretty bad strat by me. Corey gives me a shot over there, which was very nice of him because I'm trying to get my super. Tuni also gets a shot. So here is where we have our chance to move up. I'm one shot, I think, to my super now. Um, maybe it's a little bit further on. Yeah, I guess it's a little bit further on. I go back a little bit. Tyrant breaks my wall. So now, obviously, it gets a lot harder because having walls are cool. Um, but at the same time, I'm still a Barley, and I still feel like I can win this lane pretty easily at that, considering, you know, it's still a dog. Um, and so here, I'm one shot to super. Been trying to get it for a while. I finally get it, and then I get two tapped by Tyrant as I threw the super. You guys can see Tyrant's one shot. Corey was low and would have been forced into a corner. If I could just stay alive, I think we would have scored there and won. But I messed up and I died because I'm bad at the game. And now, you know, the game goes into overtime. And you guys know how this goes in overtime. So I'm kind of just trying to do my thing. OG's trying to do his thing. But Zulan is very good against Spike. He's known for playing Spike. He's known for dodging Spike. He's very good at anything related to Spike. So um, he's not getting hit by anything right now. I'm not really able to do anything to Tyrant, and the game is kind of unfairly on Toonie's shoulders because everyone is treated up, and Byron's a pretty easy brawler to play, and Corey's just tapping on a powered up Byron, so they're going to end up winning the game. We definitely had comp there. Um, if I were to change anything, I probably would have went more aggressive and also have gone Dinah rather than Barley, but that's going to give them the 2-1 lead. Very sad for us. Next set is Shooting Star, though. You guys know we love Shooting Star. So let's hop into the Shooting Set. Show you guys what happened. All right. So for the Shooting Set, we banned Nani because they had first pick. And they banned Tick because Tick is such a good brawler on this map. Like, Tick is very busted. Into every other mid, Tick is very busted. And it's good into Piper and it's good into Nani. And it was that Tick was a really good ban by them for sure. Um, so they end up first picking Piper. We proceed to go with Jean and Fang. And the reason we did that is because giving the other team Fang is not a good idea when they already have the best brawler on the map. Um, and being a Jean, it's kind of easy to just stand here and win lane as Jean. Not really even win lane, but just like tie lane or hold your lane. It's pretty easy. Um, Tyrant goes up, makes kind of a silly play there um, and goes down. So now we have a three star lead. So after Jean and Fang was taken, they ended up taking B and Leon. Now, I personally think it wasn't that bad of an idea uh, by them. The Leon pick was really good, uh, as it's really good into Fang, and usually pretty good into Jean, and obviously good into Sprout when you can sneak on it. And they took the B, I guess, for the Fang, which was actually a good idea, because our Fang couldn't do anything. But after... Talking with Corey uh, a little bit or seeing what Corey had to say after the games. Uh, I don't think he was a fan of the B pick, which B is a really tough brawler into Sprout. So they had B in the mid versus the Sprout and a B is not beating a Sprout. Like I understand Zulan's a good B and a crazy player, but you get any, you know, player with a brain on a thrower where there's walls versus a B and they're not going to lose. So... 20 seconds left. It's been a little bit of a stalemate, which is why I'm trying to just give you guys as much information as possible because it's getting a little bit, you know, like nothing's happening here. Zar goes down, so now they only need one kill. I'm waiting for someone to get into my range. Tyrant gets into my range, so I'm going to pull him, and then OG's just going to super. He's been saving that super all game. Gets use out of it. Gets four stars and the blue over his head, and we're going to take the one to nothing lead in shooting star. So going into the games, we wanted myself to be on the Leon lane and then OG to be on the Piper lane because it's pretty hard as a Piper to like four tap a Fang. Like it kind of takes a lot of work. It takes the Fang being pretty bad and it takes the Piper being pretty good. And Corey, I mean, he's a pretty good Piper, but it's just pretty difficult to hit a good player four straight times at that distance, especially when they can just walk backwards, you know? So they change up their strategy here. They decide to send... Zar, or sorry, not Zar, Zulan as well to the left side of the map. And I think that was really smart of them. Uh, that's not something, uh, not that I would just mid B into Sprout, but it's not really something I would think of just to like fully 2v1 one of the lanes on this map. Um, so that was really smart of them. Corey gets a curve in, OG goes in, he is going to trade. And now as a Fang, 
it's he's in a weird spot because he you can't hold your lane as Fang. Eventually they're gonna push you back because you're just chipping for 500 damage, and they obviously have a B. Um, but at the same time we have the lead. So what is OG really supposed to do? Is he supposed to sit there and let them push up, or does he super in, maybe die and throw the game? It's kind of like a weird position to be in. Uh, but Zarya ends up going down over there. And now 40 seconds left. They have all their supers. They got curves. They have honey pots. They got the invis, the Leon turret. Like they are set up. Um, fortunately for us, though, we have our Gene super and our Fang super. So we're also looking kind of scary. So now it's just a game of raw mechanics at this point. They have 40 seconds. Can they kill us? Can they use a Piper and a B to eventually kill us? Um, I'm pretty sure at some point this game, Zar yeah, right there, Zar's joystick messes up, so he starts to like walk into a shot. He walks into a 3K. I miss a pull on Corey. He jumps away. OG barely misses a super. Um, he ends up going down, and that is going to be it for this game. So we were very close. Um, I'm gonna blame Zar's joystick for that one, as we were doing pretty well with the jukes and all that. And I think it would have been the same as last game, where they just walk into us, and then. Um, I hit a pull or OG hits a super and we somehow win the game, but not the case. Uh, Zar got tapped up. So we're going to a match point game three. Let's hop into it. So again, same thing we're looking for here. We figured out that the lanes don't really matter because as long as you don't throw your lanes, we're going to end up having the lead because we did outdraft them here. Uh, they, it, it was really even kind of the drafts. They outdrafted us in flaring. Uh, and they Phoenix they ended up winning that we outdrafted them actually I don't know they outdrafted us in swoosh and then we won swoosh but then we outdrafted them in brawl ball and then we lost brawl ball so I don't know if, how much the drafts kind of matter side note that I don't want you guys to see Corey just three tap me let me take that back the drafts definitely do matter a lot we definitely have draft here but draft wasn't the end all be all in our series yesterday even though it is very important. So this is the first time we've had, um, we haven't had the lead in this game. But again, fortunately for us, I mean, the mid combination is just like, it's just too easy for us to walk up on. Um, I don't know what they could have went. I think the best alternative was probably Brock. I don't know how good Brock would have been into the Fang though. I kind of feel like Fang would be feasting on the Brock because if it wasn't a jump Brock, the Fang would be going crazy on it. And if it was a jump Brock, then it would kind of just be like a B. And the B would actually be better. So I don't know exactly what alternative they could have used, uh, but we definitely do have comp here. Anyways, Corey's getting to tap in. Same situation as the last three games. Uh, very little time left. I missed a pull there. I was feeling kind of dangerous and I wanted to max range pull. Probably a bad idea though because it is the end of the game and it's match point. Zar with a really clutch wall though over there and OG's just going to slide in. Don't know if it was needed for him to super there, but he does. Good shots over there by Zulon and now they just need one kill to win the game. So we're kind of scared, but I think we did a perfect job of body blocking uh, for each other and healing each other and all that. And we end up taking the win and push it to a set number five. So just in typical, you know, SC men versus tribe fashion, we go to set number five, literally playing three games in every single set. So let's hop over into ring of fire and let's show you guys what happened in the set that decides everything. All right. So going into ring of fire, which is a very interesting map. Um, they banned Crow, which I don't know if that's necessarily the right ban or not, because what ends up happening is you give the other team Byron, um, and then they also ended up taking Lola, and I mean, I really like Lola, and in fact, I thought we were gonna go Lola, because Pam is so good on this map, but after we took Byron, they took Lola and Leon, and I was ready to go Lola, I was very ready to go Lola because I thought they were going to Pam and Leon, but instead they went that. So then we went the dog. What did we want? We went the dog and Pam, and then they last picked Mr. P, which is a questionable last pick, if I'm going to be honest, considering our comp is based around giving the treat to Byron and Pam and then just having me heal. So they have a really good start here. Big credit uh, to this start to Tyrant because Tyrant was able to get behind us really easily. And how we win with this comp is I run into the middle of the map and I walk left and right and then Toonie heals the Pam and then we win the game. Uh, but the issue 
was the Leon kept getting behind us and messing with our insane big brain strategy. Um, so once we got control back, it got a little bit easier here. But Zulan's doing a really good job just kind of... He's just tapping, doing the usual. It's kind of hard to, sh to juke two people when they're all shooting at you, but... Toonie's doing an insane job healing. Also, I don't want to, like, act like I'm not getting healed literally the entirety of this time while Toonie's powered up. Um, so I think this game was just our faults for playing dumb. Uh, we can't allow the Leon to get behind us. Because if the Leon gets behind us, we lose. And it, it all connected in our brains after that. So let's hop into game number two, show you guys what happened there. So going into game two, again, we're like, all right, we figured out how to play this comp. But we just have to have OG make sure the Leon doesn't hurt us. So OG switched lanes, and then the Leon said, haha, you thought. And then he also switched lanes. So then OG says, okay, I will also switch lanes. Tyrant wastes his super there, which is very bad. Very bad. Not, not very good. The tree gets thrown down. These guys are clipping, and when I say these guys, I mean Zulan is just absolutely clipping me. I don't know, the Zulan guy has always got a super, so it's a little bit hard. Toonie's doing insane. He's healing me as much as possible. If you watch Toonie, he's literally hitting every single heal, and I'm just sitting in the zone doing my thing. Then if you also look at OG, He's doing his job really well because he's just walking up and trying to stop the Leon and not letting it get behind us, which allows Toonie to just heal me. And then Zulan stopped, you know, clipping me as hard as he was earlier, so he let us get a lot of percentage in the zone. Uh, now Tyrant finally gets behind us, but we're going to be able to just take him out. And we got a lot of percentage there, um, so now we got to heal up. We kind of got to do our thing and get back in the zone. This Penguin, though, look, I take one, two, three... Four. It takes me four Pam clips to take out one penguin. So that kind of takes up a lot of time considering I'm like the win condition. I have to go into the mid and get zone. Um, Toonie goes down there and it was looking kind of grim, but we take some ammo from Zulon. Uh, we kill Cory over there and he wastes his porters. Meanwhile, OG is able to tie over there with Tyrant. And then we kind of get all situated again. Toonie, you know, he's got his heels ready. I'm in the zone all powered up. And now they got to take me out. Toonie also gets his power up. So things are looking pretty good. Now everyone's kind of just sending it towards the middle. Because the middle is all that really matters at this point. We just need three more percent. But unfortunately, they take us out. But very fortunately for us, I was one shot to a turret. So I just throw the turret down. They have to shoot the turret. Toonie's healing me. And we win the game by four percent. Very scary. Very, very scary. But we take the win by four percent. And now it is... Of course, because what else would it be when we phase Tribe? Goes to double match point. We have played all 15 possible games that we can. So let's hop into the last game. Let's show you guys what happened. So going into the final game, um, again, I think the Mr. P pick by them was a little bit strange. I could see why they wanted to go Mr. P because we had Ruffs and Byron. Um, and it's really good into both of those. But I think they kind of under... I under expected I don't know if that's a word they I don't whatever they didn't expect Lola to not be able to take out Pam um, when you have Byron heals with power up and with all that you definitely can't win Lola v Pam when you're the Lola and the Pam's all powered up and getting heals like there's just no way you have to hit every single shot no matter what like it's pretty crazy um, and I'm just getting healed I'm just taking ammo Toonie's doing his job really well OG's doing his job really well and we have 60% to start this game I mean this is insane it's like the craziest start we can possibly get they finally take the Pam out after 68% which is just insanity I I left the zone and I was like oh like I'm not looking at the numbers I'm like holy damn we got a lot of percent meanwhile Toonie three taps Corey and then he also heals me and kills Tyrant in the process, and he's powered up, so he gets us that zone back, and I think that was a little bit of a throw play by Tribe. I don't know if they would have been able to win the game regardless because of comp, but that was a really good play by Toonie, which got his control back, and now, again, I'm just in the middle doing my thing, juking, Toonie's healing. We end up killing them, and the third game definitely did go our way, and we ended up taking the match. 3-2. Uh, Every map was won, 2 1 by whoever won. Um, the drafts were really intense. The games were really intense. And just everything in general was really intense. GG's to them. It could have very easily have been a sweep if 
uh, things worked out for them in Gem because they did win the first set and the third set and Gem was really close, but uh, we did end up pulling together and we did end up getting the win against them, uh, which is really big coming up for this weekend. You know, it kind of raises our confidence a little bit, but after a loss, you know, the other team usually thinks that you have to, they have to prepare more or work harder or whatever. So they're going to be turning it up before the monthly finals. So we're going to have to as well, but uh, that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed this type of video, which I know you guys do like comment, subscribe, all that. There's going to be another one after the monthly finals. Hopefully it goes well. If it doesn't, I'm just going to end up making a salty video. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it. So I'll see you guys again soon. Peace out and uh, have a good day. Hello. Yes, you there watching this on your phone. Have you ever wanted to be the best, the most handsome, the most loved player on your team, and support your favorite creator at the same time? Well, I have good news. You can be all of that and more by using code Bobby. But you have to do it now because this is a limited time offer. Use code Bobby at any Supercell Games store.